To make our sites load faster, we want to reduce the amount of data being downloaded. Fewer bytes of text is fewer milliseconds or seconds waiting for that resource to load. When we write CSS or JavaScript, we should be indenting our code correctly, using empty lines to group content and adding comments to provide context. When the browser reads our style sheets and JavaScripts, however, it doesn't need comments. It ignores them. It also ignores any spaces or tabs used for indentation, and it ignores blank lines. All of these things are just extra bytes that slow down load times, and they're meaningless to the browser itself. We should just get rid of it. We generally refer to this as minification. Minification's goal is to reduce the amount of characters needed to represent your code without changing the meaning of your code. The most basic form of minification simply strips away comments and extra white space. This is usually pretty safe, meaning it's unlikely to change the meaning of your code while it's compressing it. Some minifiers have more aggressive techniques. For instance, variable names in JavaScript. Some variables have a very defined scope, such as within a function. The minifier can reason that a certain variable is only visible within a certain area of code. And if it can reason that, it can rename the variable from something like my special value to just a. This is slightly more dangerous because if it's wrong and it improperly renames a variable, your code could break. Minifiers that do this have very sophisticated rules for what is safe to minify. Now some, like the closure compiler, will look at the whole of your code for your entire page and application. And it can find unused code and completely remove it. Now, it needs to be able to see your entire application to fully understand what code would be safe to remove. Along with minification comes concatenation. We may split up our scripts or style sheets into multiple files for the sake of organization, but each of those has to be requested separately. There is a cost for each connection established and each file sent, so oftentimes it's faster to join or concatenate all of our scripts or styles into one file so there are fewer connections open. Let's take a look at some of the tools we can use for concatenating and minifying files. So there are a lot of different tools we can use to minify our JavaScript and CSS. One of the oldest used ones and most commonly used one is JSMin, written by Douglas Crockford. This gives you some information about it, but it's a command line tool that will take a full file and create a smaller JavaScript file. This has an exe file right here, or you can build it yourself. It's a little bit more difficult to get started. There are other tools. One of them is called Uglify.js. And this is because it may make your code ugly, but also very small. So this will take our code and minify it in various ways. And you can find out about some of the techniques it uses on its GitHub page. You can install it yourself as a command line tool. But if you don't want to go that far, it is available online through some various services like this one, where we can simply paste either the URL of a code or the text itself, and it will show us the output. So for example, if I take the fully uncompressed, fully commented jQuery code, I'm actually gonna do it by URL here. So I've copied it. And if we place it in here, and all we need to do is click show, it's gonna run our code. And now we can see at the bottom here, a lot of code all jumbled together. It should have the exact same effect as including this file, except it's much, much smaller. But the downside is it is more difficult to read which is why we'll typically include our full size files in development. That way, if we need to debug anything, we can get information about line numbers and variable names. However, in production, we'll minify it and include that smaller version instead in order to increase performance. Another tool that was mentioned is the Clojure Compiler by Google. And this is a very good tool. It actually offers different level of optimization, like our white space only, which is pretty safe some very basic things, as well as some advanced. And this is where we get into the point where we need to include all of our code, because if we do advanced and some of the other options, it can actually remove unused code. But again, that requires us to put our entire project. This is a tool you can use on your local system, but the closurecompiler.appspot.com includes a hosted version, so you can simply paste your information in here. So if I were to copy the source of jQuery, and let's just add our code where it tells us to. We can compress it, and we can see it went from being 238 kilobytes to 96.1, which is a very, very good compression ratio. Yahoo's YUI compressor is another tool you can use on your local system, but here's an online version. 
and this will also do our CSS for us. So we could paste our CSS and it would remove the white space to create a smaller file. There are a lot of different tools and if you use some frameworks like Ruby on Rails, the minification and concatenation may be done for you automatically. It should be part of your deployment process though to change your full sized files to the minified files. And most frameworks like jQuery will include a pre-minified version for you to use so you don't have to minify it yourself. There is no hard rule as to if this will always yield faster loading because a browser may download two files in parallel faster than it would download one. You should really test to see if concatenation is having measurable results.